Tarun, you've been in India now at Hyundai for a long time. There is one view that perhaps the company could have been a little more aggressive. You spoke about your high capacity utilization. You've been operating at more than 90% capacity utilization for a while, which means in a way it could have limited your growth, which otherwise would have been. Would you agree with that? Because it's the first time since 2009, since you've been in India, that you've gone ahead and even added capacity. There are two things which are very important here. One is what is our core strategy? We believe in quality of growth. So if you see, yes, volumes are very important, market share is very important. At the same time, shareholder return, profitability is also very important. So we have really moved uh, very, very consciously in that direction, you know, to have a balanced approach. The second thing is, although this is a new plant which is coming in here, like you said, after 15 years, at the same time, we have been continuously working on debottlenecking and increasing capacity. In fact, as late as July of last year, we increased the capacity in our Chennai plant by 50,000 units annually. So I think the whole idea is how you can continue to grow. At the same time, you look at all the aspects and grow together. Win-win is, I think, very, very important. And that is what we believe in. Okay. And Creta EV, I believe, is coming very soon? Yes. Uh, financial year 25, quarter 4, uh, Creta EV, yes. Okay. So what's the outlook, uh, Mr. King, on uh, EVs? Because EV, as a percentage of your portfolio, is very small. You've only had Kona and Ionic 5. Um, it's currently 1% of your overall revenues. Uh, what would be the mix of EV in your portfolio, say by 2030? So we are planning to launch a full EV model uh, across the premium and the mass segment, including our credit EV, uh, Q4, and this financial year. Also, the, we are localized the EV supply chain, mm -hmm. like the battery pack, driver train, and the battery cell, etc. And uh, we are investing uh, charging infrastructure as well. Yeah. So four EV launches, including the Creta EV, which comes in in Q4 of FI25. Are any of these born EVs, native EVs, and what's the timeline for these launches? Yeah, yeah of course, we are looking at dedicated EVs, uh, base-up EVs, definitely. And as of now, we can just say that, yes, uh, next few years, you will see these four launches, as we have mentioned in our RHP. Well. Next few years? Yes. Okay. Now, SUVs already is about, what, 65-70% of your domestic mix. Uh, now, you've literally enjoyed and led the SUV, SUV you know, trend in India. Uh, are there any product gaps? Can you talk about your product launches from here on? So, Rima, as you see that uh, when we launched the Creta in India, SUVs used to contribute only 13% to the overall market. Today, SUVs are contributing, if you see industry, about 50-52%. As far as Hyundai is concerned, in fact, this year, we have already reached 68%. In fact, in September, we reached 70% SUV. So it's a very strong part of our strategy. Uh, I cannot talk about the future product launches, uh, but I can say that whatever, we have always been ahead of the curve in terms of launching products. Uh, last year, we launched the Exter, which really opened a new segment for us and really has, is doing very well. Uh, going forward, we will see, you know, uh, where are the opportunities. At the same time, in addition to the new products, we'll also look at, you know, how we can add more value to the customer. For example, we, we, we had the dual CNG in Exeter, which is really getting some very, very good response from the customer. We introduced uh, some more variants of in venue in the sunroof. So we look at the entire thing, you know, and the whole objective is how to really innovate and give more value to the customer, give more options to the customer. Market share, though, Mr. Garg, has come down. Right. You enjoyed a market share of more than 17% about three, four years back. It's down to 14.6%. And you are seeing increased aggression from Kia. Tata Motors' market share, which was 5-6%, thanks to its SUV sales, uh, EV sales, has gone up to about 13.5%. So it's a close third. What are you doing to protect your market share and get back to 17%? So, Reema, if you see, uh, we have been in India for more than 26 years. Yeah. And I think one reason for our success and continuous growth has been that we have believed in fundamentals. We have believed in really growing sustainably. We have believed in introducing new and technologies because we have a very strong parentage from HMC. We have access to all kinds of powertrains. And like I said, we have been, you know, trying to raise a benchmark in terms of technologies, whether it's connected cars, whether it's EDAS. Today, eight out of our 13 models have EDAS, you know, and a very high penetration as well. So we believe that market share is very important. Nobody wants to lose market share. At the same time, we want to grow in a balanced way. Like I said, volume, market share, profitability. The new plant which will come in, like I mentioned, will add about 30% to our 
overall capacity. I think it will further really give us some more levers to increase our market share. We don't want to lose market share. We want to get back the market share. And we will do everything possible, in, in, including new launches, including, like and this said, EV. Today, if you see, we do not have too much of a market share in the EV segment. But launch of these four products, along with localization, will help us to really, really grab some market share in the EV space as well. So we want to grow sustainably. We want to grow in a balanced way. Okay, and you want to get back your uh, market share, which you've lost and conceded in the last uh, few years. Can you talk about how being a part of the South Korean entity, HMC, uh, helps your India operations? Why is it that, what is it that Indian shareholders need to know? Because you are paying a royalty of 3.5% to the parent company. If you see, you know, uh, uh, we have really, really gained a lot from uh, HMC's strong R&D capabilities, like I mentioned, the new technologies, the new models, you know, the Creta came in 2015 uh, because we knew that, yes, the globally, because HMC is so successful in markets like U.S., you know, Europe, Korea. So we have access to those trends. We keep our eyes and ears to the ground. So I think it's a very good mix. Uh, you know, Indian as well as the global, uh, uh, you know, strength. Then Blue Link was in, uh, introduced in 2019 in venue. Uh, we had six airbags as standard when we launched the extra across all models. So I think in terms of technology, in terms of new models, uh, in terms of today, if you see HMC has all kinds of technologies, petrol, CNG, diesel, strong hybrids, plug-in hybrids, uh, electric vehicles. So I think this kind of an easy access to uh, HMC's uh, powertrains, HMC's r and capabilities. Also, if you see, infotainment is becoming very, very important. Going forward, maybe software-defined vehicles will become very important. So I think our, uh, HMC's R&D capabilities are very critical. Hyundai brand, because HMC is now, HMG is now the third biggest globally, the OEM in the world. So I think that, that gives us a very strong uh, 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 Hyundai brand. Then in terms of manufacturing and quality standards, so you can see uh, the 3.5% royalty gets us access to technology, gets us access to brand, gets us access to know-how. I think this is a very, very good uh, uh, proposition for us. When do you next revisit the royalty agreement? Is there a risk that it goes up from three and a half percent? So we believe that yes, it should be for a for a for a for a long time. You know, we believe that it should not. There's no reason to change it. Uh, you know, uh, in the near future. Okay. Now, uh, Hyundai Global also owns a 34 percent stake in Kia Motors, and the global company is promoting both equally Kia in India and uh, Hyundai Motors. Is there a conflict of interest? Uh, Hyundai Motor Group is the third largest uh, OEM globally, mm -hmm. and uh, Hyundai and the parent company base, Hyundai and the Kia are listed company in Korea, and uh, Hyundai and the Kia are operating differently, and uh, two brands are working very successfully in the global market, in the U.S. market, European market, Korean market. Now is the same as well in India. Okay. There is no conflict of interest. There is no preference which is given or increased aggression shown by the parent company to promote Kia over Hyundai. And how does this Indian listing change the equation between the two? Absolutely not. You know, because we are working independently. Uh, like when I need a, a model, I will raise my hand and tell my parent that, yes, this is my study of the market and this is what I need. So there's absolutely no conflict. Okay. What about related party transactions? I think income from related parties is about 8.3%, uh, and expenses from related parties as a percentage of the overall expenses is 34%. I add them up, we're talking about more than 40%. Where does that number go? So if you see, you know, HMG, uh, as a, like MD said, that, you know, third biggest global OEM, so we have an access to the entire Hyundai ecosystem. I think this is a huge trend. Related, uh, uh, as far as related parties are concerned, all the transactions are done on an arm's length basis. And of course, confirmed by auditors, we have a very strong set of independent directors who oversee our activities. So we have been in India now, like I said, for 28 years and uh, really conducted business with the highest standards of governance. And we intend to continue on the same path going forward as well. So 40% related party transactions could stay at these levels and it's not a concern for you? Look, frankly speaking, I think how we study this related party is very, very important. If you see our localization, you know, we, we are uh, approximately 80% localization. So, you know, how we study this uh, uh, related party is very important. For example, Mobis, you know, it provides us modules. 
you know, it, 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 it uh, basically the parts and it, it has a factory near our uh, uh, plant in Chennai and that's a huge advantage to us because it gives us great quality. It does not mean that it's actually a value addition. Value addition would be much less. So I think it is all about also how you read these related parties. Revenue growth from here on? Uh, positively. Margins? Stable. Market share? Stable. The most exciting launch to look Kreta at? Kreta EV. By Q4 FI25? Yes. And view on EV? Very strong. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for joining in. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks so thank much. You. Thank you.